Hello, 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 friends. How is everyone doing today? Madame, first thing. We have a Twitch food baby. Hi, madame. Thank you so much for the nine months together. Holy heck. So happy to have you part of the kitchen crew. You even came and saw us in person. It was absolutely amazing experience this summer. Yeah, stupid having a job, but like you're teaching the future, so you can't even be sad or upset. Thank you for your services, madame. Hi, Wilson. Hi, Palooza. Hi to Kimmers. Hi, Greek. How are you all doing today? We got Murphy Boy Radio in here with us already as well. Sammy's staying warm in the house with Doggo right now. They're cozied up in front of the, the dish heater. Yeah, you got a red knife now, madame. Ooh, very powerful. That's so good to hear, too, that you adore your kiddos. They're so great. Here comes Astra. She was crying. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Did we start without you? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's so cute. Hello, Vonzo. Oh, thank you. It's honestly taken like years. I'm not even joking, like seven years to regrow my eyebrows though. So thanks. And hi, T. Casella. Good to see you this weekend. Yeah, happy Saturday, friends. I hope it's going good for everyone so far. Yeah, I did it. Exactly. Those uh, French Ukrainian jeans. Good eyebrows. <laughs> okay, so. First things first, we got some tea today. I made us some green tea, honey ginger. Keep us warm out here while we work. So here's the menu that we're gonna be making up today. I know we did some tomato soup yesterday and we're gonna keep the tomato train going, I suppose we should say. So a tomato ragu with slow roasted pork, which we've made this before on stream. It's absolutely amazing. Doing it today, it's gonna be a little bit quicker because our pork is already roasted. So this is gonna be another version of us using up the leftover pork from when we did the whole pig on the Traeger. So we'll kind of make our ragu first and then put our pork in near the end so that it doesn't get dried out. And then to go along with that, oh, I forgot to put the cheesy polenta in the menu description. So we're going to make a cheesy polenta because that's also linked with the recipe today with the ragu. I'm just going to quickly fix that on my end. And then because of health, we got some vegetable sides there. Sammy picked up some nice Brussels sprouts from the store. And then we also have some beautiful cauliflowers from the farmer's market. So we'll roast those up until they're nice and like crispy and caramelized. And then we're going to dress them like a Caesar salad. So a Caesar salad dressing and just a little bit of Parmesan, I think. I'm going to leave bacon out of it for that. Okay, menu command is fixed. Wahoo. And then for dessert, I'm so excited to make these chocolate coconut blondie bars. Deadly, deadly. Hi, Mama. How are you doing? I'm first to claim the coconut blondie bars. I'm so excited. I mean, I think that's what we're going to kind of start with today. Start with the blondie bars and then we'll roll into the rest of lunch. That ragu, we should be able to have, like, if we're just making the tomato part of it within an hour or so. So it's really all about prep today and then it should be pretty quick cooking near the end veggies will take what 20 minutes to roast up and dress them and then polenta is actually quite a quick a quick technique is about 10 minutes just on the stove top so we should have everything going in the oven the pork and the ragu the veggies finished roasting and we'll just quickly mix up our polenta on the induction here in front of us and then plate it up good to go it looks awesome, hey? Okay, so we didn't post up the recipes yet. So there's the three. So the pork ragu with creamy polenta is from Bon Appetit. Really, really good recipe. I really like the polenta recipe there too, is all of the ingredients they use are proper. And then second one there is I found a like 
kind of Caesar salad done with Brussels sprouts. So I thought that would be a good inspiration part is I couldn't find any recipes online that just had like the vegetables roasted and then dressed as a Caesar salad after. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, Wilson. So yeah, I linked that one for inspiration. And then the last one, our dessert recipe from Sally's Baking Addiction, dark chocolate coconut blondies. Why are we making those today? Got to use up chocolate. We got some coconut to use up. Good to go. Hey, excuse me, what are you doing? I don't think you need to eat grass, no. <laughs> Dogs. Get, you should get on your chair. We're in a good spot. Too funny. Okay, I'm gonna get this list out. Her belly's hurting. I don't think so. She's just, she's kind of like pouting. So my brother's belly is actually hurting today. So he is hunkered on down in the house there. Maybe we'll, we'll get him up for lunchtime when it's ready. But he said he's been having like crazy stomach cramps. So yeah, it's all quiet there. So she's, I think she's just like concerned. She doesn't know where to be. Thanks, Wilson. Yeah, love and healing vibes to Rando. That's rough, right? Tummy issues, nothing to laugh at. All right, our list. So Regu, we'll do, let's say our tomato sauce first and then the pork gets added just at, near the end just to basically heat it through as the pork is already cooked until it was nice and tender and juicy and then we just vacuum sealed it and froze it in the portions we've also done this recipe before by actually cooking the pork shoulder inside of the tomato ragu and that is very nice as well I, uh, I guess we have our hype squad here with the sirens already. <laughs> okay, carrying on, polenta. So this is, if no one's ever had polenta before, maybe you call it something different. Think of like a cornmeal porridge, but done savory style with cheese and vegetable stock. All delicious things. Oh, and we even got some fresh corn today. So we'll cut off the corn kernels from the cobs and put that into the polenta too for a bit of extra texture. So I'll do what? Cornmeal, liquids, corn, cheese. There are kind of our pointers that we have to remember. And then for the veg, so Brussels we'll write down cauliflower we get those prepped for roasting and then our caesar dress and cheese okay and then just our dessert pretty simple yeah i think if we start with the dessert and get that baking in the traeger and then kind of roll into the tomato ragu sauce. And then I was thinking that it would be nice to just kind of roast that away in the Traeger as it's going. And then while that's going, we can work on our vegetables for roasting next. And then all of the polenta items should be very simple and easy. And I planned this menu today so that we had two things in the oven and only one thing on the stove top for myself because I really only have like one to two burners max to be able to use. So I don't like to overload myself and having to cook everything on the stove top in my outdoor setup, which doesn't really work the best, right? Okay, so dessert first. Let us look at this recipe. And I've been told to make a double batch today as well of our bars. I'm pretty sure we have all the ingredients enough to make a double. Dark chocolate coconut blondies from Sally's Baking Addiction. These dark chocolate coconut blondies are by far the chewiest, softest blonde brownies you'll ever make. They're ultra buttery, studded with dark chocolate chips and full of sweet coconut flavor. This is the part I like. No mixer required for this easy bar recipe. Let me just have a peek over here. 
We're good. Timber. I'm on early. I don't think so. I think this is when I usually start, am I? <laughs> Welcome in. Yeah, Wilson, polenta is very, very similar to grits. I've only really dealt with grits one time. It was specialty. They're hard to find here. Okay, so... Whoa. Why the blondies are better than brownies? She didn't even she didn't even explain why though. I was going to read it. I got excited. I was like, "Tell me. Tell me why." Okay, that's looking really heckin' good. Okay, so 18 large blondies from I always look at the pan they use. So nine by 13, we'll do two Lloyd pans today. We'll use those and line them up with some parchment. Stam Hyrule, thank you for the follow and welcome. Yeah, 11 a.m. Pacific I start or 12 p.m. Mountain Time. Okay, these bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then they will take about 35 minutes, it says. 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 35 minutes. Easy mode. High speed. How are you doing, sir? Thank you so much. Rolling in here first thing with the 300 bits going towards our food truck fund. We're at 64% now. 64% of the goal. Morning. How's the weekend? How's the life? Okay, ingredients that we're going to need for our dark chocolate coconut blondies. Flour, baking powder, salt is the dry ingredients, that's it, other than the coconut and chocolate chips. Flour, baking powder, salt. Then we need butter, brown sugar, eggs, and vanilla. So very like basic baking ingredients that we should all kind of have on hand, I would say. I am gonna go grab those, I will return, and then we'll start mixing these blondie bars up. We'll be baking them in the Traeger today, that's our oven. I think I'll use my two biggest bowls for making this since we're doubling it. Get a hand towel for myself. I'm feeling a little bit like slothy today, guys. I guess probably just because I'm not fully caffeinated. I'm on green tea caffeine rather than coffee caffeine okay there we go we'll also have to line our two pans with some parchment here so i'll get that ready for us okay i'll be back with some ingredients hold tight Do, do, do all of the chocolate and coconut. Should we switch to this now? I think so. Okay, what else am I missing? What type of sugar we need? Brown sugar. 
Butter, brown sugar I need, eggs still. That's it. Butter, brown sugar, eggs. Okay, the only ingredient I'm iffy on is the brown sugar. So we might just have to bump it up with a little bit of white sugar. We'll see though. We shall see what we end up with. I think the first thing I'll do is just get our butter amount measured out. And then we'll get it melting. Sammy, he's inside. He's inside right now, Speed. I don't know. He's just, he's being a little snuggle bum and hanging out and playing some games, I think. Oh, I don't think Sammy's in pain. Just my brother's in pain today. Has a sore belly, that's all. Okay, butter. Oh, one cup. So two cups, two full cups of butter is what we need to get melted. It does say to have it like slightly cooled, so we'll make sure that happens too. Just have to go bring it into the house. My bro's napping right now. And 4B81, thanks for the follow. Welcome in. Yeah, Sammy's just enjoying his day off, right? Because he works Monday to Friday now. got his full-time job and yeah Mondays is he's there like super early 6 a.m. to start the week and then every other day I believe is 7. Okay that was just a partial partial pound there so I'll just bump it up with a bit more but I feel like we are missing. Something like that. Maybe we'll leave the rest of this out just in case we need it later for anything. Probably not though. Hey, Nike, my dude. Hi. Welcome in. How was your day of work yesterday? Pop that away. Rinse my butter knife. And Forby saying hello from Denmark. Hi there. Hi, happy to say that you're not the only viewer we have from Denmark. So welcome in. It's great to have you. Sometimes we also refer to ourselves as Danadians. So I'm Canadian and then our Denmark viewers are Danish. So we call ourselves Danadians. We have quite a few similarities we've learned together over the years. <laughs> Stam Hyrule. Hopefully you enjoyed the treats I gave him yesterday. Wait. Oh, yeah, 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 you're that person. Yes, we did. <laughs> I was like, what treats? Okay, so I'm just pulling some parchment so we can line our pans first, and then I'll go get this butter melting real quick. Should not be more than a minute. One. Nike. Work sucked ass, but you made it out alive. Yeah, you did. Happy to hear that you made it out alive. Oh, it's the sous chef at Go Auto. Hello, chef. Welcome in. I am the wife of Omdog. Okay, so how I line these, where are my kitchen shears? Just take some scissors and we just 
cut if we line this up a bit better. You just cut the corners so that they'll lay nice and flat inside of there. Really helps later on when you go to cut the bars. Just lift this whole piece out. Press that down. And then one other thing I sometimes do is just give, as you can see, it doesn't really want to sit in the pan flat. Usually I just give it a little spray of nonstick and then it sticks right in there and get nice clean edges. So I'll go grab that bottle in a sec too. Let's finish this other one first. These are going to be so good. The last blondies we made were salted butterscotch blondies and those were heckin' good. People went insane for them. So cannot wait to see how these dark chocolate coconut blondies turn out. Think of blondies like a brownie without all the chocolate. Without all the cocoa. Okay, I'll go grab that non-stick spray. We'll get that sprayed real quick. Hi, Brian. Things and stuff? It was being bad again? A little bit, yeah. Being a bit bad again? Hi, Bonk. Hi, hi, hi. How are you? How has your week of work gone, Bonk? Little spritz. Yeah, see, I'm glad I said something then, Wilson. Always thought it was a brownie with white chocolate swirls. I know, that's what you would assume, right? If it's called a blondie. <laughs> Is the camera being a butt again? Classic. <laughs> One thing that you do have to realize when you are a streamer or like a full-time streamer is every day is going to be different with technology. Well, maybe not for everyone, just for me in particular, because we take down and reset this up every single day when we do stream, right? Can't leave all this expensive stuff outside. Okay, so I'm happy with that. If you need to, you can push some of the air bubbles out, but that looks way more clean yeah good one bonk non-cocoa and quite vanilla heavy too good point And yeah, last time I made the blondies, everyone said it was like such a nice switch up from the typical chocolate forward ones. So our pans are all lined now, so we can just put that aside. And now we'll get into melting our butter. And then from here, so we're going to whisk together the flour, baking powder, and salt in a large bowl. And then in a smaller bowl, we'll mix together the melted butter, the brown sugar, and then we whisk in our eggs and vanilla. Pour the wet into the dry, whisk it together. And then in the end, we fold in our very fancy shredded sweetened coconut, as well as our chocolate chippers at the end. And that way it doesn't get over mixed and the blondies don't become like really dense and tough. <laughs> yeah, good thing you're smoking a Borg loin. And hi, Ryan K. Hawkins. Hello to White Dove. Welcome in, friends. Good morning. Hope the weekend's well. Applebee's has a warm blonde brownie dessert. Oh, baby. <laughs> Nike's baking his own pork loin. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna get some bowls set up here. I'll quickly go melt this butter and Chef Mike. Putting him to work first thing. First thing this morning. Oh, gelato, yeah. Okay, I don't even think I'm gonna mute. I'm just gonna pop in here real quick. So melt in two cups of butter. I mean, three minutes might be a bit much on the knob. I'm gonna say a minute and it'll be good. It's melting, a smelting accident. Yeah, just over one minute to melt an entire pound of butter in the microwave. A minute and a half. Doggo's helping me, just in case. Because, you know, I left her out there all alone. <laughs> Nom! Okay, so I said to just let it rest there for a few moments once it is melted. I'm also just going to give it a little stir. to make sure it did melt nicely. No lumpers. Okay. Let's do this. Flour, first things first, come on in. What breed is the dog? Oh. She is a rescue, and they think that she was a German Shepherd Rottweiler cross with possible, like, husky. Tika Sella, you finally got your Dutch processed cocoa from Amazon after the first one got lost in transit. Oh no, RIP cocoa. Can't decide if you should make the bumpy cake or fudge brownies first. Oh, what? Okay, so I linked that bumpy cake because I was like, okay, I need to make that, but I've never had it before. So if you make that, let me know how it goes, Tika Sella. But I mean, the easiest thing for sure is the fudgy brownies. And yeah, they are heckin' good. So easy to make. I will say, just from experience, that the batter for the fudge brownies is really, really thick, but there's a reason for it. Don't feel like you have to add any more liquid. Don't do it. Get down with the thickness. But yeah, that bumpy cake, probably maybe put it in next week's menu. Okay, so we're doubling this up, so we need four cups of flour. All purpose, nothing fancy. And then I suppose I should get the oven heating up right away here for us to... To... Three, four, there's that. Next one, some magical baking powder. 
Hello, Suki. How are you doing? We need two teaspoons only of that. So you don't rise super, super high. That. And then some salt into this bowl as well. So one full teaspoon of salt. <laughs> Iconic container for sure, Greek. <laughs> Not just baking powder, it's the magical kind. There's our salt. You're doing awesome, Suki. You got to see your tiny dictator, your niece this morning. Nice. Had a good little visit. Yeah, it's like one of the only brands in Canada, Greek. Your mom always had that brand. Okay, so from here, let's just grab a spatula. I'll just loosely mix this up so it looks more combined. Perfect. Put that over and we'll switch to the sugar, butter and eggs next. Just gonna get the Traeger going. Gotta fill it up with a bit more pellets. So 350 degrees Fahrenheit is where we want our oven. Just need a few pellets, I think. Dusty, dusty business. Okay, that's going. I'm just gonna rinse my uh, grill hands here. Try to get back into our blondie bars. Sammy had his grilled cheese and tomato soup this morning, right before I started for an early lunch, let's say. <laughs> Greek, really? Your mom would be like, I'm not even doing this recipe if I can't find magical baking powder, it's that good. Yeah, pellets, or are we grinding coffee? Just pellets, bonk. Hello, Carses, how are you? Okay, so next up. Sugar. 350 grams, so 700 grams of sugar. Let's see what we end up with here. Somehow I feel like we'd have just quite not enough of the brown sugar. We'll just measure it right into the bowl. And it is a little bit dry, the Demerara. 700 grams. Let us begin. Rogers is massive in Canada, Greek. For, I know they do white and brown sugars, but do they also do flour? <laughs> You're a sugar dog. Totally. Standing beside me. I'm sure you could like just see her little nose here, wagging her tail. Like, hi, I'm here for the sugar. 
That's not a normal thing, just so you're aware. Most dogs aren't like this. Oh my gosh, we actually had enough. We had enough sugar. So now we got to put it on the list. We had seven grams extra. Wow. Okay, real quick. Where's our bring up? Brown sugar on the list. Dunzo. Perfect. Quick sip of tea. I think it's Rogers is like strictly Canadian Greek. Okay, from here, I'm just gonna break up some of these bigger pieces. From here, we're gonna pour all the butter over this and then we're gonna whisk it until it gets like smooth. We use demerara sugar, a nice dark one, so should turn out awesome. Okay, our melted butter is rested. <laughs> Holy. Scrape all the goodness. that to the side. <laughs> yeah, this recipe, <laughs> Paula Dean approved. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to just, should I fix my camera? No, we're good with this. I like where it's at. Okay, so just take your whisk. You can see how thick this is gonna get. I might have to get a stronger whisk, we'll see. Oh, well, maybe not too bad. Get all of the sugar absorbed with the butter. <laughs> yes. Oh, bonk. I don't even have any rum. Worst bartender ever. Can you tell we're not big drinkers? But I am a rum person. I heckin' love rum. Mostly just dark. I don't really mess with white rum at all. Caribbean rums though? Florida Kenya? Get in my life. Okay. I guess that's what we're looking for there. We're smoking it up over here too, by the way. Next one, like Bonk was saying. So heavy vanilla flavor in the Blondie bars. Ugh. She's getting bunged up. You still haven't seen dark brown sugar in the store there, Gaelic Tea, and you're in Switzerland? Or Sweden? Only granulated and light brown. Yeah, Kraken is a good one too. That, or I like Sailor Jerry's is also good, along the same lines. You like the coconut rum, Wilson? I love coconut, but I find the flavor of the coconut rum is like too fake almost. Whoa. So you can tell because it's getting like cool or because it is a cooler day out here. Look how that's like getting solidified already. That's why bakeries aren't usually outside. <laughs> okay, for eggs, so we need two large eggs and then two egg yolks. Yeah, ginger beer is so good too, Nike. Maybe I'll just crack all of these in a container just to make sure they're good. Two whole eggs and two egg yolks. Okay, 
Then we'll crack the other two eggs and just get the yolk out from there. Oh man, the alcohol content in Sailor Jerry's, I remember the first time I bought it. Just like, holy heck, this is strong. But it's way better than Captain Morgan though, we can say, right? Now you're making me wish I had rum around because that would even be good with the chocolate and coconut. Okay, get rid of this eggy business. Wash my hands and then we'll mix this up. Yeah, you're in Switzerland, Gaelic tea? Okay. I may have issues doing this Greek. Don't say that. <laughs> I need a bowl warmer. Like the butter when it was warm, this worked good. But now that it kind of cooled off, we'll see. Just got to go quick, Greek. Never give up. Never surrender. Also scraping the sides as I do this. There we go. That's a good start. She is a thick batter. It's looking nice and creamy too. looking like it transformed just now, hey? Add a teaspoon of salt we already did, Frank. I've never, well, no, maybe I have done that before, Wilson, the water bottle egg separating trick. I think it's more a waste of time, but fun to try, like on the first time. Always fun to try new things. Okay, I think we got everything. Butter, brown sugar, eggs, vanilla. Pour the wet into the dry. And then we fold in two cups each of coconut and chocolate. So that's going into here. And as you can see, we already are ready with our spatula. So as soon as we start mixing this, it's gonna get too thick for a whisk. <laughs> can you tell how heavy the bowl is? <laughs> the dog comes running over like yes it finally happened <laughs> okay my chat is paused right now on my side but i need to scroll down and see what you guys are saying that was too good terrifying greek terrifying Okay, so I'm just going to put this down for a sec. Good thing we didn't like put flour everywhere. Imagine. I did kind of bung up my hand though. Okay, we're okay. Let's clean out the whisk. Maybe we can just tap this off. Most of it. Okay, good with that. Crazy bacon with Kate today. Do you see her Greek? She's just like, I'm into this. It does look like toffee. Totally. I mean, it's pretty close to it.
And then we have this mess. <laughs> there we go. I'm glad I looked. I actually didn't know that was back there. <laughs> so that's how the day is going to go. Had to wash my hands after that one. Yeah, she was very intrigued. Literally came running over when she heard the drop. She's like, oh no. Big time bonk. This dog, massive sweet tooth. And then she also likes sour stuff too. It's so like anything lemony or tomatoes even. So silly. So once again, I can already tell this is going to be a very thick batter. Mix it about half of the way and then we'll add our other ingredients. Okay, that's good. Get a two cup measure out. Yeah, it's not supposed to be chocolate. But we're just adding chocolate chips instead. You can see why we're adding the chocolate chips when I take my bag away. Because when we moved, it was in the middle of the heat wave. So look at what happened to the chocolate. Is some of the... The cocoa butter has kind of come out. So when you notice that happening to your chocolate, good idea to use it up pretty quickly. Just breaking up some of these lumps. Yeah, use them up quick. So remember we used them a little bit the other weekend. I think it was last weekend. And then I made sure I found another recipe to use them up again this weekend. And like even in the dessert last weekend when we used these, it didn't taste bad at all. It tasted like a really good chocolate still. It's like if you let it go like this for months on end and then you're like, oh, I should probably use this up. Nah, she's long gone. The clumps might be okay. You want a big chocolate bite? And now our fancy shredded coconut. One of my other favorite ingredients. Load it up. Yeah, so now you know what to do, Greek. You got chocolate chips like that. Time to use them up. Boom. We've been chocolated and coconutted. Now we gotta finish mixing this. Probably gonna taste like a bounty bar later. This is why I'm imagining. Just scrape some of that off. Even as I'm mixing it, it almost smells like a bounty bar already. Make sure when you're mixing, you get all the way down to the center and the bottom. That's where a lot of dry, dry goods like to sit. Flower bits. Don't want that at the end. Oh, surprise. 
think it's easy if I just kind of make myself into a food processor and cut the ingredients in rather than trying to mix it. Because it is so thick, if you guys can tell. Anything else sneaking along the bottom here? There's a little bit. I'm sure this would also benefit from like extra salt in the batter. Like Frank was saying, add a teaspoon of salt, which we already did because that's what the recipe called for, but we could always garnish with an extra sprinkle afterwards. Okay, my arm's dead and I think this is fully mixed. Let's bring our pans over and distribute all of this. Hi Rose, how are you? Yeah, I really like dark chocolates. I don't mind white chocolates, but they're definitely not my fave. Oh, perfect Greek. Yeah, that's the best. Waifu's making stuff to bring to work. Best way to use it up. Okay, now I'm going to distribute this. As best as I can in half. Notice some dry bits just underneath here, but it's not too much. A little bit more there, and then the rest can go into this pan. And then about 35 minutes to bake in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. this look even? I think I got to bring a couple more pieces over. And yeah, this is a sticky batter. Holy smokes. I'm going to just use my hands for the first bit. It seems like it doesn't want to stick to my hands too much. So I'll give it a nice press. Very small amount that we needed to even this out. And yeah, once we put this in the oven, the batter will even itself out the rest of the way. So don't worry too much about being too rough with it. Hi, Cookie. How are you doing today? Okay, let's do the other one. First, do this corner. Parchment's bugging me. These are going to be insanely delicious. Think of just like a thick square shaped chocolate coconut cookie. It's pretty much what this is. Okay, awesome. The rest of that off. That look even? I think that looks nice and even. Hello, little baby kittens. Yeah, that's what she says. Is like, you should leave it a little bit under in the center. It'll look under, but it won't be. And that's how you get it nice and chewy and fudgy still. Cool, Rose. That's so awesome. Okay, I'm gonna bring these over. Do one at a time. 
got some weight to it. And then we're gonna set, let's do a 20 minute timer first and then we'll rotate after that. I'm just gonna take a moment to myself and have a quick bathroom break at this point. I will be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back, guys. So Rose was being a sous chef for your daughter again, made grilled pork, grilled eggplant, and garlic bread, all made from scratch. Yum. Salt and sweet together. So good, guys. So good. Okay, so dessert, we can cross off the list. 350 degrees Fahrenheit, about 35 minutes to bake that. Let's do a quick wipe of our board and now we're gonna switch to making some lunch while our chocolate coconut blondie bars finish up. Yeah, I did that Greek. Thank you for pointing that out as well. I don't know how my OCD didn't even notice that, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're rolling into the pork ragu next, which means we're starting by making a tomato sauce together. And then we're just using up some pre-roasted pork so the pork will go in near the end so it doesn't dry out. So tomato sauce next. And we're gonna roast it in the Traeger, I think. Maybe actually start it by like, Roast in some onions and garlic together first and get those caramelized at a higher temp. And then from there, we put the canned tomato in, let it simmer, put some fresh basil in there as well. Let that simmer. And then, like I said, add the pork near the end. Holy yellow mustard and cheddar cheese. Really threw me back to my childhood there, Greek. Thank you for that. Okay, I'm gonna bring some ingredients back in. I will return with some other ones as well. Hold tight. Guys, we still have some hazelnuts. Got some hazelnuts to use up. Chocolate hazelnut tart coming up. Might just. Okay, got that. Garlic. Some onion. Oh, 
Greek? <laughs> Your keyboard. <laughs> or yeah, what's a cat board? <laughs> Nike, too good. Too good. Okay, so recipe that we have linked from Bon Appetit. Pork ragu over creamy polenta. Lots of good reviews. We've made this, I think, at least two times before on stream. Just one sec. Hello? Hello. Good, how are you? Thank you. Got a big package, got some truck parts. Randall will be excited. Okay, so three pounds of boneless pork shoulder and they just cut it into three pieces originally. And then they just roast that or cook that inside of the tomato sauce that we're gonna be making here right away. So vegetable oil, onion, garlic, tomato, I'm gonna do white wine today instead of red wine. The only red wine I have is actually quite expensive and it's more of a drinking wine than cooking. So I don't wanna crack it open. Maybe parts for the food truck? I'm actually not sure, Greek. The box is massive. It's like as tall as me. <laughs> I was like, whoa, there is a thing. Okay, so onion, garlic, tomato, wine, thyme, they do rosemary. I'll add some bay leaf in, why not? That sounds great. So we'll get that tomato sauce going. And then our polenta later, super simple, cornmeal, fine ground one, butter, Parmesan, pepper, a little bit of parsley if you want. And then I think they just do broth or water with it. An exhaust, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Can you make carbonara with Parmigiano Reggiano? It might be a bit salty, madame, but like that is what is traditionally used. So I should say yes. You just might need to maybe dull it down with a touch of the pasta water or something like that. Or just careful that you don't use too salty of a bacon for it. Okay, cool. The pasta queen makes it with pecorino. So pecorino is a sheep's cheese. Pecorino is like kind of the same thing, but it's made with sheep's milk. Parmesan, madame, rainbow pants. <laughs> Nike. <laughs> Too good. Okay, I'm gonna put my, so another Lloyd pan today. I'm gonna start by roasting our onion and garlic together first. I brought out a couple fresh tomatoes too. Thought we would pop those in with a couple of the cans. And yeah, we got, look at this, farmer's market. I would assume these are red Russian. Red Russian garlics. You may have fixed the computer. Well, that's good, madame. I didn't even know there was anything wrong. That sucks. Hopefully you do get that fixed. So this garlic is quite strong. As you can see by the size of the cloves, a little goes a long way. So let's bring our chef's knife over. Start chopping up this stuff and then we'll just toss it with some olive oil in the pan. Yeah, Red Russian, super strong. We're not even joking around here today, Nike. I'm like, look it. It's so juicy. So good. I need more light in my life here. even hard to smash proper we'll peel that up and then I think we'll just slice it into pieces rather than trying to mince it because I don't want it to burn
We'll pop that in the oven with the onion. And then we'll work on our roasting veggie stuff while this is going. Shouldn't be too crazy of a stream today. 10 minutes left on the timer, so we're halfway through. The original timer we set on the blondie bars. We'll be checking those in about 10 minutes. That is some sticky garlic. Holy hex. Yeah, we need more. Hey, Nola. Oh, that's a good idea, too. Just like some like pork belly, just plain to cut through the saltiness of bacon. Good one, Nola. Okay. Our farmer's market onion. I'm just going to cut off the top here where it's a bit dry. Pop this in half. It's just about sprouting. So good thing we're using this up. And then I think I'm actually going to peel this outer layer. It's kind of dried and papery. I don't love it. I noticed it yesterday in our tomato sauce is it didn't really break down. It stayed papery. Because we're not blending this ragu today, really good idea to get rid of that. Otherwise, it will just become like kind of papery in the sauce. So it won't rehydrate. Okay, so for this, like I said, we're not blending this again today, so we should cut our onion and everything else quite fine and small so that it breaks down into smaller pieces and you don't really notice it in the sauce. Hello, Gavino. <laughs> Red garlic blondie bars. <laughs> and hi, Green Fang. Hope you're doing good. Okay, so like half inch cubes is what we want. I will reuse that. Just go into the next part first. So same thing with this half. Even this is really juicy. Sliding all around on the board. little bit of root end there. Wanted to make sure that I cut it fine enough. Okay, so all we're going to do is usually I just make a couple slices along this way. Go slice, 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 turn it around, slice, slice, slice. And then we discard that root end that doesn't really break down anyways. There we go. Love the flavor of onions, but they evacuate your guts almost instantly. Really, Wilson? Crazy. You're lurking, Nola. Thanks for the lurk. You didn't want to interrupt. Please don't feel scared. I'm gonna go back into your hole. Okay, enjoy your hole. Thanks for popping out of the lurk. I'm just gonna line the bottom of this with good amount of extra virgin olive oil. Something like that. Now we'll start putting the onion in. And because we cut this quite small, it should cook very quickly. At least that's what I'm thinking. All right, where'd our garlic go? So garlic next. Like I said, I'm just going to slice this into chunks. We've already smashed it and broken it up a touch. Okay. 
It's strong. It's burning my eyes, the garlic. Not even the onion. The garlic is. That's a sheesh. Yeah, we live, like, right by the fire station, guys. That's why you're hearing the sirens all the time. And some days are just busier than others. I don't know what the heck. Okay, so we'll transfer that over. And then we'll just stir this up. Just give it a stir to get it evenly coated. And then that can go in the oven. Let's rinse our knife, our hands. We'll also wash off our cutting board. So that garlic flavor doesn't seep all the way into the wood. Firefighting world, Wilson, it comes in waves. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then everything's happening at once. Okay, we'll spread that back out. Now it's time for roasting. Probably just carry on with our tomato sauce train right now. Get all of our other ingredients that we need for it so we can keep cooking right along. And then we'll switch to the veggies. Then we'll switch to our Caesar veggies. My little spoon holder. Okay. Three minutes now on the blondies. Lloyd pin pans fit really good in there. Really, really good. Okay, so we got a couple fresh tomatoes for the sauce coming up. We got some thyme. Put some herbage in there. I will return with two cans of tomatoes. We need some fresh basil from in the house. We need some white wine in our life. Hello, Miss Ellen. Thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Yeah, I'm roasting in the Traeger. So we got right now Green Fang. We're baking our blondie bars in there. And then we're also making our tomato sauce in the Traeger. Bring this with me. Nose is running today. Okay, that. So we got some Pinot Grigio is our white wine that we'll use for the sauce. And then we have two cans of whole tomatoes, but with no salt added. So we can get those opened up. And then we can also pick the thyme off of the stem. Hello, green box box. How are you? Smoked blondie bars, right? I think we're still going to have some like smoked pecan pie coming up Greek. Smoke the pecans ahead of time. Put them into the pie. Nom. Yeah, it's my, it's one of my favorite white wine varieties to cook with Green Fang is the Pinot Grigio. 
It's not too sweet or too acidic. Quite balanced. Oh, it's all good, Greek. You don't have to apologize for the caps. We know you got a crazy keyboard. Okay, my timer's going off. Go give those bars a little rotation here in a sec. Just get that top off. minutes. I'm gonna say they maybe won't need another 15. I'll do another 10 minutes. And then that'll be half an hour of the 35 minutes that they said it might take. Okay, so that's good. Let's just dice these up. Pop them into a container. And then, oh, maybe I'll take the little core out first, too. How about ribs or wings cooked on the BG or the Traeger with some sweet sauce like honey garlic? Yeah, for sure that'd be good. I don't know if we've ever done wings yet on the Traeger. But we've definitely done lots and lots of pork ribs. Now you kind of have me with the hankering for chicken wings. Woof, that is juicy. Squeeze it out almost. I think I'll just quarter these. We're very tomato-y this week on stream. Yesterday, our roasted tomato soup. Today, we're making a roasted tomato and pork ragu. I guess tis the season? I suppose it is, isn't it, Wilson? It is ripe tomato season, Kate. It is. It's just doing my job, helping to inspire you to make some delicious foods, right? Right. Okay, next one, our time. It's always yummy. I don't love these when it gets curly like that. Since we got some time to deal with the time right now, we're gonna deal with those pieces. So we're just working on taking the leaves off of the stem, but we don't have to cut it up because as this cooks, it will release lots of the flavor. Good afternoon, FCB. How are you today? Hopefully not working too hard. Wilson, your wife says your cooking has increased tenfold since you started watching. What? That actually just made like my entire week. You saying that. That's amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. And I love that like other people are noticing that you're improving. You've never or yeah, you used to never use temperatures or anything like that. Or even most seasonings. Awesome. And FCB, you're doing great. That is so good to hear as well. Yeah, we're an educational channel. This time is actually coming off pretty, pretty easily. Not like too bad. It is quite woody though. Like you can see, 
is I'm literally dealing with a branch here. <laughs> Bit of a woody herb. Yeah, it's about time, Nike says. Oh, man. So we started watching on, I think it's Netflix series, series called Good Girls. Has anyone else watched that? We're like obsessed right now. We're on the second season. Been loving it. Would you like taste thyme or wood or both? You wouldn't taste the wood. It would just be the textural part of it Greek. As you would literally be like eating a stick, right? Like, I don't know. You're obsessed with Grimm and then the boys. Yeah, you guys were talking about that earlier and I wasn't like fully following along. Is that a new series too? And yeah, we got to watch Grimm. Maybe that'll be our next one. Okay, we're almost done the time. And then I'll go grab some basil leaves from the house. Go see how Sammy's doing. Sammy and Doggo, she left me out here all alone. She's roasting herself in front of the heat lamp. to make a joke Greek it's okay don't feel bad oh nice Nike okay uh I'm gonna mute real quick while I go do the couple things in the house because I'm gonna go blow my nose too it's being silly and running so hold tight I will be back momentarily Whoa, I just came back and it smells so good outside. So good. And I also have returned with basil as well as a dog. <laughs> I got basil. 
and I got a dog. So the basil, what are we thinking? I was thinking about just kind of tearing it up into the sauce when we're adding everything else. Maybe we'll just put it in with the thyme for now. Stack that like that. Timer for the blondie bars. Oh, 40 seconds. I'll go quickly check those. Yeah, it's a mix of like a bakery and an Italian restaurant right now. This smells. Don't know if they're ready yet. Let me use my thermometer. Oh, they are. Those baked nice. Swirl my onions and garlic around. Check these out. Oh, FCB. This one's for you. It looks healthy just because of the coconut in there, but there is nothing healthy about this at all. Mmm. We got two pans of these. So I'm just going to put my trivets over here so those can cool. Then I also get to smell it the whole time. And then now that that's done, I just have to remember to reset a timer to keep an eye on our onion and garlic roasting in there for our sauce. <laughs> yeah, low carb. <laughs> and I think I'm going to turn up the oven now too, like for hundo. Here's the other pan. I really like how this one baked. It like got the nice little crinkle on top. The sheen. Four corner pieces, please. <laughs> okay, well that was a very easy dessert to make. I'm so happy we made those today. Cannot wait to try it. Let's do 10 minute timer on that stuff in the oven. And we're pretty much done with all of our ingredients for the rest of the tomato sauce. So let's get into the veg next. I'll go grab our Brussels sprouts and our cauliflower, and then we'll get those trayed up and dressed. Mary, how is your Saturday going today? I'm excited because I see the sun's actually coming out now. It's quite chilly this morning. Yeah, basically straight sugar, sugar, butter, flour. <laughs> Palooza, sugar lubed up with butter so you can ingest it easier. <laughs> and FCB, I can't recall if I thank you for the thousand biddies going towards our food truck fund. I was like, holy heck, we're at 64% now of the way. Veggies. I'm gonna do a green cauliflower. Green cauliflower to go with the green Brussels sprouts. Maybe we'll use the yellow cauliflower next week. Oh yeah, and our corn I might as well take out for the polenta. Two of those. Okay, let's go. All of the veggies. First things first though. Look at that. We got corn. Fresh off the cob. Yeah, our goal. Isn't it so amazing, Greek? And then our nice Brussels sprouts. I'll just pop those up there. But yeah, this thing. Anyone ever eat magical colored cauliflowers? Yeah, it's an heirloom. 
I'm thinking Greek. I've never grown special colored cauliflowers before, so I don't quite know. I think we'll have to divide the veg, or I guess we'll see. Maybe need two sheet pans today for that. And then typically for the roasted veg, I haven't been even lining the pan. Fine, it's not necessary. They don't stick. Okay, we need a paring knife. Green cauliflower, also known as broccoli flower, is a hybrid of broccoli and cauliflower. Green cauliflower contains more beta carotene than white cauliflower, but less than broccoli. Cool. Yeah, the purple one is so nice too, Mary. Like when you get all three of them together. Oh. Thanks for the info, Paloozer. So first thing I'm going to do, just take away some of the stems. We'll clean off some of the parts here that are a bit browned, not so nice. going to do that over the compost instead of putting the dust on my cutting board. You know how we feel about the cauliflower dust. And then next thing, just come on in. We'll cut the core out. But I always try and leave a lot of the stem still on the vegetable. So if that's all we remove, that's really not bad at all. Is anyone else having internet issues today, Mary? Mm, I think so far so good. I don't notice any uh, dropped frames on my side. Madame, you went grocery shopping last night, bought a lot of stuff. I think there was a sale on a lot of the things because your total was only $43. So good. You got a giant collie for $2.50. Well done. Yeah, like look at this. It's like two different colors almost, right? That's what I've never done before yet, Green Fang, is the cauliflower crust pizza. I think simply because I'm just too serious about pizza to waste my time making that. <laughs> like if I'm going to have pizza, I'm just going to eat the pizza. Okay, so I'm cutting this into like nice bite-sized pieces. It's going to shrink a bit when it roasts. Sometimes it's easy to just cut it in half first. Everything smells so good outside today. All the food that we're making, it's actually making me like so hungry feeling. <laughs> Hurry up so we can eat. That's what I'm telling myself right now. Okay, that's good. Transfer some of that over to the sheet pan. Are we gonna roast it with the sauce? So we're gonna roast all of this just simply with some salt and pepper. Actually, I do have like a smoky salt. I'm pretty sure I have a bacon salt. So we can add the bacon salt in. And then once it's crispy and roasted, madame, then we're gonna drizzle Caesar salad dressing over top and finish it with some grated Parmesan cheese. What temp and for how long? I usually do, if you want to get a nice color on it, like 425 Fahrenheit. 425 Fahrenheit for about 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, I had some of our extra homemade Caesar dressing in the fridge. So I was like, well, this is a great way to use it up. 
This should work awesome today. And I was going to say, madame, that temperature and timing is for the very similar size as to how I'm cutting the cauliflower today. So if you cut it smaller, it's going to go quicker. If you cut it bigger, it's going to take a bit longer. Sounds good, Midnight Orchid. Yeah, let me know if you guys try this out for yourself at home. I think it would be a hit. Good way to sneak in some more veggies. I mean, the Caesar dressings maybe not that good for you, but still. Should be able to balance it out. And then notice how I slice through the stem and then kind of break it apart. I find that's also how we minimize any of the cauliflower dust. Oh, that's what the sound is. I keep getting freaked out because I'm hearing this sound like it sounds like someone's like pressure washing the house. But it's actually just the bus bus noise of when they lower to pick people up. The air compression. It's like, what is going on outside? <laughs> yeah, as long as it seems healthier, Greek. It's all that matters, right? Yeah, the air sounds. Okay, we got 18 seconds. Look at that. That's not that much shrapnel at all. 18 seconds till we check on our sauce. And this is what we got already. So this just has to get dressed up and then spread out. And then it's good for roasting. Oh, nice. Close that up real quick. Look at this. We are creating layers of flavor. Look at this one corner that was like near the back of the Traeger. So just mix this up. And then what? I'm thinking maybe another five or so minutes and then we can put some of the tomato stuff in just get those brown bitties away from the corners so they don't get too dark because then they'll taste bitter but that's uh working really awesome back in the oven and now the oven's at 400 degrees Fahrenheit by the way five more minutes okay so let's come on in with some olive oil oh yeah this pan is ribbed it's actually for a jelly roll do you know what that is madame is like the cakes that get swirled or like rolled with the whipped cream inside. So it's specially made so that that really thin spongy cake does not stick to it. But I've been using it for everything else and it works great. <laughs> the Traeger sounds like an 80s action movie villain. Yeah, these we actually picked up two packs from Costco, they're Nordic wear. But that's when we are still on the island. I don't think they have them anymore. And now all I'm going to do is just toss this up. And then we're going to hold off until it's actually time for this to go into the oven before we season it. Because the salt will draw out moisture. And then if all of your veggies are very wet going in for roasting, they're not really going to roast up. They'll more steam than anything.
but I do like a pre-oil. I find it helps them cook evenly. It's interesting. Yeah, then we spread it out. Whenever we're roasting stuff, we don't want it all piled together. Want to maximize the surface area for caramelization. And then we can also mix it up like halfway through roasting later. Perfect. I think the trigger sometimes sounds like a TIE fighter Nike. Okay, I'm just gonna pop those underneath. There's my spoon holder. I've been looking everywhere for that. And then we can get into the Brussels sprout cleaning next. Everything smells so good. Might have to take a break sooner than later though to see how our blondie bars turned out. That was olive oil, madame. Nice one. So coming in with our paring knife again, I always like to use a small knife when cleaning Brussels sprouts. I'm also just gonna move this a bit forward more. Like that. There we go. So first things first, how I always do this, uh, just a little intro into my life of cleaning Brussels sprouts is working in restaurants. We used to clean 20 pound boxes every day to cook for the masses. So this small amount is nothing. So during those 20 pound box Brussels sprout cleaning adventures, I have figured out how to do this as efficiently and quickly as possible. So first step is just cutting off the bottom part. And we want to minimize like how much we're cutting off, right? So that we can maximize what we eat later on. So really small amount cut off the bottom, just where it's discolored. And then we set that aside. Now we like to kind of separate the Brussels from what we're cleaning off. Have you had it before, Greek? Brussels sprouts with Caesar salad dressing? Cleaning the Brussels, yeah, from the sprouts. <laughs> You're gonna have to do this in a few moments as well, Carsees. Well, good luck, have fun. <laughs> zone into it. Okay, so now that we've cleaned all of that, there's lots of stems here. And then I always kind of pick through like any leaves like this that are perfect and pristine, we hold on to those. So separate the good leaves from the not so nice ones because we can still cook those. I'm gonna check on our onions and stuff again here. My timer's going off. Okay, so I'll just set that aside for now. We got hot things coming in. Getting ready to finish mixing our sauce, I think. Just pop a trivet up here real quick. Our roasted onions and garlics. Yeah, kale in Brussels sprout, that's quite a, a popular one for salads, Greek. Perfect timing. Oh, the way that the garlic roasted up. Oh my gosh, that's looking unreal, guys. Okay, so next up, what do we want to start with? Maybe we'll deglaze with a little bit of the white wine first. Something like that.
Give it a little stir around. Nice. I even had a little sizzle when I poured the wine in. Game brain? You might need to find a way to make Brussels sprouts palatable. Okay, I can't get that garlic. You should try what we're making today. Next up, our fresh tomatoes. Two cans worth of tomatoes. Because this is going to reduce as it cooks, right? So I always want to start with a little bit more than you want to end up with. Shake that out. <laughs> yeah, one little bit of wine for the pan, one little bit of wine for the cook. Okay, that's looking awesome already. Loosening up all those bitties from the bottom. A couple more things to add still. But yeah, even just the wine added in here smells so good. So we have fresh thyme. And also fresh basil that I'm going to tear up and pop into there. Because we're cooking the basil, I'm really not concerned if it's a bit dried out on some pieces. <laughs> I tasted the wine last time, but I mean, we can taste it again if you want me to. Still working on a green tea on the side, though. Mmm, sweet corn on the cob. Sounds perfect, game brain. Okay, we're really basiling this up. I think it's going to be absolutely amazing later. Okay, give that a stir. And should we just add a really small sprinkling of some salt and pepper as well? So it can season as it finishes cooking. Couple cracks of this. You're a corn dog. <laughs> Asher is also a corn dog. Carrots would not roast at the same speed as the cauliflower, madame, unless you cut them nice and small, right? So keep your cauliflower a bit bigger, cut your carrots small, then they will. I would say cut the carrots about half of the size of the cauliflower. Teeny tiny carrots, exactly. We made a roasted tomato soup yesterday, and today we're making a roasted tomato sauce. One might say, I'm on a roasted tomato train. Help! I'm stuck on the roasted tomato train and I can't get off. Okay, that pan is actually cool now that we added everything. So that is gonna go back into the oven and I will set, oh, like half an hour timer, we'll check it. Okay, we're going to finish cleaning the Brussels sprouts and then we need to take a Blondie Bar break. Blondie break. Oh, yeah. Who knows what that's from? Okay, so now we're picking over our Brussels. We're picking off all of the bad leaves. I took a bad leaf off. They're usually around the outside. And then if we look at this one, I think we've got to do a bit of uh, discovering in here is sometimes there's wormies that find their way inside. 
see. Ah! No one's safe. Did it go through the whole thing? Guys, it went through the whole thing. No one's safe. R.I.P. Brussels sprout. R.I.P. Sag. <laughs> Putting all the good leaves up top here. Discards over there by the compost bin. Tomato and oil salads and cucumber. Onion salads at the end of the season are the bomb. Woof. Found something in there. Okay, that's good. Wherever these were growing, the farm really got hit by buggies, I think. Because usually you don't find every single Brussels sprout like this. And it's so, so hard to control. Like, I tried growing Brussels sprouts once when we were on the island in the garden. Once the aphids find it, that's it. They love it because there's so many layers for them to, like, hide in, right? And lay their eggs and stuff. And so I did it, look at this, like full on wormhole. So I tried growing them one year and yeah, they got aphids and all that. And I was like, this isn't worth it because we had to toss away so many. We're after the mini heads, but we're also saving all the good leaves. I want to maximize all of the things that we eat. Mmm, that's actually something I've not made enough of at all. Carses, caprese salads. Love those. So yummy. Wonder if there's still gonna be tomatoes at the market this this week coming up. Like look at this one. The worst. Biker gang rolling through. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what to say. I've never actually cleaned Brussels sprouts that were this bad before. Like, I've cleaned a lot. Sometimes looks can be deceiving on the outside, right? Like, Sammy was pretty excited when he brought these home. He's like, I found such good Brussels at the store. And if you actually look closer, terrifying. Trash cabbage. <laughs> I actually like that name. That might stick. Trash baby cabbages. That off and that off. Just realized I didn't reset my timer for this sauce. 30 minutes. Okay, we're almost there. So many times you can say that in life, right, Game Brain? <laughs> Looks can be deceiving. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing either, right? When someone says that, like, look at that big piece. Massive.
it's like how you've been getting Brussels sprouts too, White Dove. It might have just been the season then. Might have just been the season. Okay, that's what we ended up with. I'm glad we had the cauliflower. Because, yeah, we shouldn't be getting that much waste. And, yep, really good for composting. That's where I'm putting all this right now. Into the bin. Yeah, you're a pretty nice guy, Game Brain. <laughs> I wonder if the tiny food cooking peeps use Brussels sprouts for cabbage rolls. Oh, I wonder. I mean, honestly, I'd probably say no just by looking at the sprout carses. So, like, I've made lots of cabbage rolls. I'm Ukrainian. And one thing we always look for in the cabbage leaf is it doesn't, we don't want like a big vein and hard piece because that makes it hard to roll the cabbage roll. So they would like be stuck maybe cutting out that hard piece and using it that way. I wonder though, hey? Okay, so smallest Brussels are like these little guys, right? I think we'll leave those two whole and then the rest this one's also the biggest. I think the rest will just cut in half. And that way it should all cook at the same rate. And then we'll oil these up as well and get those onto a sheet pan for roasting. Now, after this, we're cutting into the blondie bars. Is this for the fam or clients? Just the fam. Wait, what? Blondie bars are brownies? No, blondie bars are blondies. Brownies are brownies. <laughs> Game Brain's like, what the hell, Kate? Can you not? <laughs> So blondie bars are like cocoa-less brownies. So the base is like vanilla and sugary, but it's blonde. It's not brown. It's not chocolatey. But we did add some chocolate into it in the form of chocolate chips today. Ooh, just saw this little leaf. Not too nice either. And this one too. Whoa, what did I just open up here? Pandora's box. Get that gone. Okay, coming in with some olive oil again. Blondies are brownies where they purposely forget the cocoa. Factoid. And today we mixed in coconut and chocolate chips. Toss that around. You notice how I added all of the extra leaves back in with this too. Just tearing up some of the bigger ones. And those will crisp up so nice in the oven. So yeah, don't discard those good, good looking leaves. And hi Maya, how are you doing? And then usually for the leaves, because they are much more delicate than the actual sprout itself. Usually kind of commingle them in the center of the pan. So anything on the outskirts of the pan cooks quicker. So you don't want them to burn at all. Do that. Make like a little barrier for them. Leave the leaves in a small pile in the center. Cool. 
one more sneaking in there there we go and now we'll season those up in a, in a little bit once we're ready for our polenta making and stuff like that so i'll just pop those aside as well give my hand a rinse and now we're switching it up gotta test see how our dessert turned out Coffee is so good, yeah. Set that down there. Get rid of our knife for a sec. Oh, also we should cross up a cross off a couple things. Cauliflower, check. Brussels, check. Yes. Oh yeah, ragu, tomato sauce, check. That's going. Cool. This is what we made. Get a cutting board. We got Sammy's big slicing knife here for us. So good to go there. Just gonna move some corn out of the way. Get out of the way, corn. A couple other things. And now, we'll move this over. Pop the pan here. And then we should be able to just lift this out. Really, really easily. Just like that. Yay for Lloyd pans. Whoa. Mmm. The smell. Just taking that out of the pan. The warmth from underneath. Oh. Rum chata. Bonk. Sam and I like. We got into a little rum chata phase when we were still in Vancouver. We would load up like a thermos like this and just go for a walk around the seawall. <laughs> you actually lost a tooth to the old Macintosh toffee when you were a kid? Nice. Is this from the recent menu planning vid? Oh, I'm not sure, Game Brain. Yeah, nice, Maya. Rough chop pralines on top would also make a great topping. Yep. Yeah, drunk strolling. Exactly. Okay, so I'm thinking, what, in half? Should we cut 12 bars? That's what I usually cut from a Lloyd pen. In half, in half, in half, and then into thirds. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think that looks even. Very satisfying cut. The knife is still clean. Oh. This is what I got to do. First off, the top, I love the crinkles. And then if I hold up the base of how it actually looks. Yeah. That was 30 minutes total. Yeah, the only thing sticking is the warm chocolate chip still. You're right. You're right, Palooza. Okay, which piece are y'all grabbing? We got six up for grabs. Are you a corner corner? Are you a center corner? Or are you just the center? <laughs> All of the corners, you guys. Classic. I'm actually more of like a 
a center edge person. Yeah, look at this. You can see the chocolate just shine in there. A little bit of gooey fudginess still in the bar. More light up here for myself. Nice. Yeah, fully baked through. Looks absolutely delish. Break a little piece off for myself. See how we did. I'm surprised Sammy's not out here yet. Mmm. So sweet and delicious. I'm not getting a ton of coconut from it. I'm not going to lie. The amount of salivation happening, though, in my mouth at this current time, I can barely talk. <laughs> yeah, Sammy's cleaning his room. Okay, I got to answer the poll. Got a lot of corner people in here. Holy, this with a glass of milk or even just with coffee. It basically is what I said it would be. It was like a chocolate coconut cookie, but in the form of a bar. Okay, now I'm getting a bit of coconut in this bite. That's yummy. Once you get the nuttiness from the coconut shreds. Yeah. Could we have sprinkled a bit of sea salt flakes on top before baking? Yes, we could have. So we only added one teaspoon of salt in the batch per pan. We could have added a bit more just to finish and that's okay. That's okay. Now we know for next time, right? Yeah, some places like some restaurants will completely clean up all of the edges and then you just like snack on that. Then you have perfectly square pieces. But really that's like some of the best part right there. Why would you cut that off? Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do this. Is, is this going to be possible? Yes, it is. Boom. And yeah, there's just slightly warm still. Okay, I'll hold on to that, I'm thinking. He's going to go insane for those. A caramel drizzle? I don't know if we could put any more sweet into there. I'm finding that quite sugary myself. So I don't know if that would be the best thing that we need. <laughs> My thermometer from when I checked the bars. Can you tell that it got a bit chocolatey? Yeah, the salt flake, though, for sure. For sure, for sure, you could do that. Okay. We check the bars. They're absolutely delish. And I gotta just not look at them anymore because I'm distracted by how good that was. <laughs> Did you miss the pork, Regu? No, you haven't, Game Brain. We're working on the tomato sauce right now. It's been roasted in the oven. And if you look at the recipe, we have linked for it. It's the first one there. We didn't even do anything with the meat yet, so you didn't miss it. We're using up some of the suckling pig in the ragu today. Scoop of ice cream, Chase. That would be really good. And I mean, Heather, if you wanted to get really crazy, for sure. Caramel drizzle and some sea salt flakes. Okay, so before we tasted our bar, 
We just finished up getting the veggies ready for roasting later, cauliflower and Brussels sprouts. And now we're working into our polenta for the day. So I'm gonna sneak in some of these fresh corn kernels. Whoa, ugh. What is happening up top there? I'm just gonna cut this off so I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> just put that straight into the compost in its compact form. But yeah, we'll cut off the fresh corn kernels and pop those into the polenta for a nice fresh corny bite. You can tell that this is the end of the road for this corn. Look at how the kernels are like drying out. Not the freshest corn anymore. It's probably sitting in the store for a few days. Yeah, old corn and they're trying to keep it too moist bonk. Frickin' call them out. Like that's almost garbage. Might have to bring that back. Let's see how this other one is. This one's good. We, uh, we won't really ask what ha happened to that cob. Pick some more of the hairs off. Can I get that bottom part off? Holy. Poor kernels, poor corns. Okay, so last time we did the corn, we found that it was falling everywhere and then we were getting upset. Let's see if that happens again. I just don't want to dirty another pan just to keep the corn from flying everywhere. Have a lot happening, Game Brain. You're loving the outdoor kitchen. Love to see a tour when Sam is here. Unless we did that. There's nothing to really tour out here. Like the Traeger is beside me out here. I have a stainless steel shelf with some cooking equipment. But other than that, it's basically my small workspace. That's it. Other than Rando shop inside, which if you've watched the stream, you would see what goes on there. Yeah, the eggs are set up. We have two eggs here as well as my brother's. Okay, so a few pieces here. I'm just going to clean out first before we cut the rest of these off. I just don't have the heart to throw the entire cob of corn. I hate wasting food. Okay, so I'm just going to angle this. Hold nice and tight just cut slow and controlled you should also like feel the kernels as you're cutting right <laughs> there's the drop let's see what the dog does she's a corn dog until you hit the bottom so that's what we're looking for <laughs> her ears just looking up at me like oh that's for me Yeah, you gotta help clean that up. And then the other thing I was gonna say about cutting the kernels off of the corn cob is you don't wanna go too close to the cob either because then it gets like woody and papery. Saw it along. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Please help out. <laughs> the corn cleanup crew is here. 
Have no fear. Never a wrong time for a corn dog. <laughs> She's the best corn dog. If I held up this, like just the raw cob, she would go nuts for it. She would clean it up. Okay, so that if we cut the corn slower off of the cob, we make less of a mess. This is my conclusion. And this is a peaches and cream corn. Well, I guess the poll is settled. Everyone prefers corner pieces on the blondie bars. Corner gang up in here. That's a good amount of corn off of just the two cobs. Should we give this to corn dog as well? Corn dog. Corn dog accepts. Head wounds? I could go for a corn dog. <laughs> Man, I've not had a corn dog in so long. So now I'm just going to transfer the corn kernels into this container for now until we start cooking the polenta, which should actually be like momentarily. Once we get all the ingredients ready, we can probably start thinking about making it. Nice. Oh, you get way more corn. Just eating the corn off of the cob compared to what I just did. You're right, Game Brain. You are right there. Cut it into a bag. Oh, that's a good idea too, Maya. Okay, timer on the tomato sauce, six-ish minutes. Looking at our list. Corn, check. I am gonna go grab some Parmesan cheese. I will be back. Maybe I'll return with some cornmeal as well. A few other things. We'll keep carrying on here. Hot dog tempura, yes. I've never done that. Fine cornmeal. Did I say it was coming out with some cheese? Parmesan cheese. I also think come out with some vegetable broth mix. Do you want a bit of cheddar in the polenta today, friends? It's a mild cheddar, so it should be very creamy. Here's our Parmesan. Here is our finely milled cornmeal for our polenta. Cheesy corn porridge, and then we'll mix up some broth too for the polenta. I think they just did water. So for the polenta, bring six cups of salted water to a boil. So instead of doing that, we're gonna do six cups of broth because we're gonna have way more flavor that way, right? Have you ever made a corn succotash? Yeah, I have, Nola, and that is so, so good as well. Really like succotashes. Yeah, cheese and corn is a very good combo. <laughs> BB Bubs, I think, what, was it earlier this week? He made a Korean corn dog on stream. Green tea is complete. 
I'm gonna have to make some more. Okay, so I'm gonna use the fine side of the grater. We're gonna be grating cheese right now for Summon's gonna go into the polenta, and then some we're gonna use for a garnish on the Brussels cauliflower Caesar salad. So we'll do up a bit extra. And yeah, I think I might sneak in some cheddar. Might just actually cut this nub off right here. Sneak in some cheddar for extra creaminess in the polenta. Yeah, have you ever made a suffering succotash? <laughs> I mean, I didn't suffer when I made the succotash. I can't speak for the vegetables, though. What cheese is this? This is a Parmigiano Reggiano. It's a 30 month aged Parmesan imported from Italy. We actually buy this from Costco. Just over $20 for this piece. Which usually lasts us like three or months or so. You know what we're gonna do with this Parmesan rind? We're literally gonna go walk over Pop it in the tomato sauce. So that's done. Good enough there. Stop before it gets too waxy. Oh, nice. We have a Swilliams raid. Welcome in, Swilliams. Thanks for bringing your community over. Fellow Canadian, fellow food and drink streamer. What did you get up to today, friend? We're just working on grating some cheese for our polenta, as well as our Caesar salad dress Brussels sprouts. Oh, give it to Doggo. I don't even think Doggo, like she would eat it, but it's probably not good for her because it's just hard wax. So now we're gonna transfer our Parmesan from the grater into a container. I'm just gonna sneak a bench scraper under. I think it'll go quicker that way and easier. <laughs> Let's see what kind of mess I'm going to make here. Okay, balance it, Kate. Okay, that was pretty good. I'm going to hold on to the grater because I want to do a little bit of cheddar for the polenta too. Hello, TJ Borg. Hello, Mario Maserati. How are you doing? Happy Saturday. Yeah, my timer's going off in 25 seconds here for us to check the tomato sauce. So that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put some of these things to the side. Bring our trivet back up. Williams, Aw, oh, nice. You made a Dutch baby with custard and fruit, baked some sourdough and prepped some brioche. Sounds like an awesome stream. Did it all turn out awesome? Whoa, this is looking so heckin' good. We're working on a roasted tomato sauce for our ragu right now. Started by roasting some onions and garlic with olive oil in the oven. We added a bunch of stuff to it. And now this is the first half an hour. We got some fresh tomato. We got some canned tomato. 
a little bit of white wine, fresh basil leaves torn up, fresh thyme. This is smelling insanely delicious. So we're just kind of waiting for our tomatoes to cook through, right? Break them up a bit. And because we just finished grating from the piece of parm, we got this waxy rind. We're literally just gonna prop that right in there. And that will kind of infuse the sauce with some umami sort of flavors, add a depth of richness to it. Just remember to take it out afterwards, that's all. Okay, back into the oven. We'll carry on with our polenta prep. I'm gonna say probably another half an hour. Cheese for the veg, check. Cheese for polenta, check. Got the cornmeal there. How much cornmeal do we need? Just looking at the recipe. Creamy polenta. So the polenta, what do they say? I don't see how many people this recipe serves. Thanks, bon appetit. One and a half cups, of course, which I think that's insane or entirely wrong. It should actually be finely ground cornmeal. A fine cornmeal. I'm going to start with this. Hopefully we can just measure back into this container. One cup there. I'm gonna pour some into there. So one. And then a half. And this gets packed up. And this we use. And then we need six cups worth of a vegetable broth base. That's actually quite a bit. So I'll go grab some warm water and then we can mix in some broth base to that. I'm going to bring the Parmesan back in and return with some cheddar cheese to finish the polenta. And then we're done with the cheese grater. So that can go together there. Like a cup, a cup of mild cheddar. Ticasella. Oh, and okay, starting with Mary, just catching up here. Or actually game brain. Are you going to blend the tomatoes? I was not planning on it. I was just going to let them cook apart and keep the ragus are typically a bit chunky with the tomatoes. So Mary, is it okay to use white wine instead of red in a ragu? Yep, I used white wine today for mine instead of red. That's a-okay. And then off topic question, but Ticasella needs help trying to figure out how to convert a nine inch crust recipe into individuals, planning to use three and a half inch jumbo muffin tins. Best you can find on Google is that each pie crust will make about four. I think that's quite close. It might actually make closer to five actually, now that I think about it. 
and then par bake them for 15 minutes and then another 25 that might be a bit much that might me be a bit long okay and you're making little quiche lorraine pies I mean, basically you're just baking them until the egg is cooked through, right? So just watch for that. Would recommend probably using a thermometer. I know I love chunky tomatoes too. If we need to later game brain, if we're like, oh, they haven't cooked apart enough, we can use like a potato masher just to smush them a bit more later. Okay, medium cheddar. Just making sure that I did reset the timer on the tomato sauce. The cheddar I don't have to grate as fine because it melts a lot easier than Parmesan does. We'll do a cup of this. Why? Because a recipe is just a guideline. So really, the question is, why not? We're always here to cheese, cheese, cheese it up. Yeah, that's a good tip as well, Maya, is to not par-bake the mini crust because then they'll probably get too dark. Move that out of the way for now. Okay, wipe all this goodness off. And pop that in a container. All of the cheeses. Okay, our liquids. I think I gotta wait a sec before I go grab the water. Guys, that's it. That's it on our list. Holy heck. So currently just waiting on the tomato ragu to finish up before we add our pork into there. Our veggies are prepped and ready for roasting. We got a couple garnishes good to go. And we already tried our blondie bars, which we are very happy with. Bring this craziness back over. Is the handle on the knife actual wood? Yes, Green Fang, it is. It is actually wood. So that's why you never actually submerge it in water or anything like that, because you will destroy it. All right, is there anything else that I need? Well, I'm going back over there. I did have a little bit of parsley in the fridge. I just don't know if it's nice enough for us to use in a garnish today. Oh yeah, I need a little bit of butter, which I do have here still for the polenta. So that's good. Yeah, you're welcome, Maya. Always reuse this. And this was actually like the plastic wrap was originally wrapped around a little bit of bread in a package. And I was like, well, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not dirty, so good to go. We have not watched Schumacher yet. Maybe we'll watch that tonight. You have it set to play in a couple hours. Sweet. And you've been following F1 since the late 80s. Amazing face plant. Amazing. Like I've just started following the last few years. Yeah, do it. I can just imagine, Maya, yeah, if all of us actually reused 
plastics properly. Madness. All right, I'll be right back. Is what I will return with is we can cut up our pork I like how I originally labeled this big Sammy's like what if we do like a, a pulled pork eggs Benny is what we originally froze this for but not we're making some ragu today just got to cut it up a bit smaller I don't like when the pork or like any meats are too stringy in a sauce. It's hard to eat. And this is the pork that was from our roasted whole pig on the Traeger a few weeks back. So yeah, we didn't waste any of it. We used up all the stock from it last week and we made a ramen and then there's this bag and I have one more bag in the freezer packed and that's we're holding on to for Eric's Cubanos that he requested us to make. User 104848. Thank you for the follow and welcome in. It is a challenge, Williams, right? Like you really have to pay attention if you want to live a low waste life. What do I plan on putting that into after I cut it up? Maybe just a bowl. Two hundred and nine times I've used the word bag. <laughs> okay, so some of the pieces are good to go, we can say. And I've also been picking through a bit to make sure there's not like any weird stringy pieces or veins that I might mix in by accident. So definitely clean that off. Whoa, that's like an entire piece of cartilage. That's a fat. Okay, that's a nice big chunk of pork. We'll just cut that in half. And then once we add this into the ragu, maybe what? 10 or so minutes just to get them combined and the pork heated through. Good to go. Good to serve. And yeah, I was going to make the ragu. I've never done it yet with pasta. Serving it with pasta. But since we never made polenta earlier in the week on stream, it's actually one of my favorites. Is this ragu with cheesy polenta. Just how the recipe says. Your dad and uncle made a pit roasted whole pig party when you were young. It was so succulent, but wow, it sure had a lot of prep. Yeah. It was so succulent, hey? That was like the only word we kind of felt was the proper one to describe it when we originally ate the pork that way, Maya. So crazy. It's like it's so succulent, it almost doesn't even taste like pork anymore. These, uh, is that a gelatinous bit? Oh no, it is, but it isn't. It's actually a cartilage piece. I was gonna say any gelatinous pieces definitely stick that in for the ragu sauce. It's a nice chunk here. Yeah, like these bits. That's flavor. Flavor town.
And yeah, don't ask me what pieces of the pig this is. <laughs> At this current state, I am unsure. That package of pork was deceiving. Like, it looked like such a small bag. But I'm looking like I already have more than enough. Is anyone here a slow eater? So slow that the food goes cold? Sometimes, Mary. Sometimes. Ms. Williams, your family ordered takeout sushi. They sent every item in a massive plastic container. Two huge bags filled with plastic. It was honestly enough for us to not order from there again. Yeah, right? As we started paying attention to that too. Is like most of the places around here have started using the like multi-use containers. Like either you can recycle them, which is a nice option, or you just hang on to them and use them as like freezer containers, stuff like that. This is like such a pristine little piece of pork. I'm guessing it was the loin. I don't know. So small. What did I just open up? It's like trimming off the really cartilagey bits that wouldn't break down at all in the sauce. They would stay like very rubbery or crunchy. If you like that, by all means, leave that in. I just cannot stand that as a mouthfeel. It's all good. All I smell right now just standing here is the Parmesan cheese that we just grated. It's like the main smell right now. So strong. Okay, we're almost there. So yeah, if you ever have leftover pulled pork that's not just like covered in barbecue sauce, making a pork ragu, great, great way to use it up. There we go. That's for sure more than four servings. Sticky pork hands. Pop that away. Well, quick rinse a reel. And then I'm gonna go grab our water for the broth for the polenta. And then I think we're almost there. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I have an unfair advantage. The starting point that we had on that baby pig, you got me there, face plant. You got me. <laughs> okay, while I go, honestly, I think I'm just gonna pop this cutting board over top here. 
we'll commingle our cheeses too or like put them closer just so that the flies don't bug while we're gone and then i'm getting six cups worth of warm water for our broth for the polenta so i might be a couple minutes so hang tight, talk amongst yourself. I will be right back. Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hi, this is my husband, Sam. How is your VR? Mm -hmm. He was playing some Beat Saber. <laughs> beard is majestic. It needs a touch up, I think. It does need a touch up. Uh, I've been beard oiling it every morning. So that's why you never came for a snack -a bite then. You were in VR. I didn't even know it was ready. He didn't even know. I was like, I need to burn some calories. Wow. Wow. Like we did that to Sammy. Yeah, Poor I did. guy. Yeah. <laughs> Bonk. Yeah, call him out. Needs a bit of a cleanup there on the cheeks and neck. Hey, 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 hey. That's what I was thinking, Bonk. Yeah, yeah. daily exercise. Barber, may I? Yeah. May I have an appointment for Sunday at 
4 p.m. please. Sunday, 4 p.m. The barber appointment is scheduled. Yeah. Okay. Appointment confirmed. Okay. We're not showing the box yet. We're still making lunch. This guy. I have returned with six cups of water. And we are going to make some broth real quick for the polenta. You know, I think I'll just mix the broth into this container, the bigger one. And then we'll just pour the water out of the other one. And honestly, this, what we used yesterday, we used this in the tomato soup, a new little thing from Knorr, not bad. More similar to like a better than bouillon, just dried version. Mary, all right, my Australian friend calls cookies biscuits. How do I describe biscuits and gravy to her? That's a hard one. Uh, call it, yeah, like savory scones and gravy. <laughs> Extra dry bread trunks, dairy gravy and muffins, Torino. We want it to sound appetizing at least still. <laughs> Okay, so they say for every cup of water, you can use a teaspoon of broth. I'm gonna go with like that. That's about what we did yesterday. And I will say like, even though the first ingredient is salt, not overly salty at first, you actually get more vegetable flavor off the bat. Can't knock it. Yeah, try saying savory scones. Our timer is about to go off here for the sauce and I'm thinking it's probably gonna be the time to add the pork in as well as veggies roasting. And then we'll get our pot set up to make some polenta on the induction. Let's just get this all dissolved first. Little lumpers always float to the top. Just use the side of the container to crush them. Crush them. Yeah, good one, Sama. Posting a little raffle command real quick. Added a bunch more names into there this morning. Lots of entries. I would say probably close to like 300 now. It's crazy how fast that adds up. So yeah, that's a bit of a color difference from broth to water, right? Anytime we can use something other than water, it's always going to turn out better. Okay. I'm gonna kind of clear this, get our trivet back up and let's bring our tomato sauce over. Bicky and gravy. I love biscuits and gravy. Hello. Wow, that's all I can say. Look at our little parm chunk. Oh, it's already like melting and softening up. Scrape the goodness off of there. Okay, so let's mix this. See how we feel about the tomatoes. Are they cooked enough? I think I'm gonna go grab the potato masher. Bring that over. Let's just scoop this parm rind out for a sec. Go grab the masher and then we can crush these whole tomatoes a bit more. Then we're gonna put the pork inside of there. <laughs> Mystery prize packs. If you wanna find out what they are, Nola, I know you're in our Discord. So I believe I posted the photo in the announcements section. I'm sure if you met or search raffle in discord you'll see the photo we have a lego set star wars cookbook cocktail bar set full one for you 
We have a pizza port, a t-shirt, some Twitch merch, some St. Jude merch for another box. All good prizes. Did the name get in the raffle for the sub? Yep, I do it after stream, madame. Just I found previous raffles we've done. It's really distracting. And then the food starts to suffer because I keep having to start and stop to write the names. So after the first couple of times we did that, I decided that it's just easier to write everyone's name afterwards and that way no one gets missed. I have a very large ledger We've almost filled out two entire pages. So how I do it, I write everyone's names, the weeks that they enter, the amount of raffles they have, and then once they hit 20, that's it. Yeah, no food suffrage, exactly. Well, this is working great. Even mashes the garlic in better. Tap, tap, tap a -roo. Start working on the other side. <laughs> Face plants wants my parm chunk? No. That's mine. Ten gift subs is ten entries. You got it. Yeah, there's a bunch of different ways to enter. You don't have to do all of them. And I mean, there's also a free way to enter, right? If you don't want to spend anything. You can also support us just by watching the stream. And using your pots and pans points. 20,000 of those gets you an entry. Okay, that is looking very ragu. Holy! <laughs> Thank you, Facebook. Talking about it. Thank you for gifting 10 subs to the kitchen crew. Let's welcome everyone in real quick. We got Vit Joker, Nth Encounter, Zyberia, Dusty Sandwich 99, Pitbull Girl 4, Soggy Ass Ribs, Viral, Malarkist, Yet It Is, and Tef Bano. Welcome to the crew, friends. Also, hello, Annie. How are you doing? How is the weekend? How was your week at work, at school? So good to see you. And Hefe, what happens to the parm chunk? So now, literally just going to pop it back in there and let it keep infusing with the pork. Do you see this hornet right now? The last hornet of the season. It's going to die. This is not the home for you. Thank you. Okay, now let's stir the pork in. So the pork will give off some juices too. And we don't want the ragu to be like super loose and liquidy, right? <laughs> well, that just got really hearty and full of pork in no time at all. Where did the parm chunk go? We lost it. No, it's still there. I'll sneak it up in the corner here. Okay, so spread all this into a nice even layer and that's going back into the oven. 
And I'm also going to pop the veggies in to get roast in, too. And then our next task is polenta. Everyone needs to be here. Thanks, Faceplant. Thank you, Mary, for the 500 biddies. That's also an entry into the raffle for you. <laughs> Soggy ass ribs. <laughs> what a username. The bar setup would go well with your drinking problem. It would, Nola. It would. Okay, so I'll pop that on the least hot side. Then we got our veggies under here. So we pre-dress them just with oil. So we still have to add just a touch of salt and pepper before that goes in. So we'll do that now. Open it up. I see a looky loose rolling in here. Got to keep scrolling down so I can keep up. Thank you, Sammy, gifting 10 subs to the channel. That's my hubby. So don't worry, guys. Those 10 entries aren't going into the raffle. But thank you for helping to spread the deliciousness dearly. Thank you to Kimmers for the 500 biddies going along in our hype train. That's a choo-choo for you. Looky Lucy, 2,000 bits? Wow, wow, wow. Thank you for that, Looky. That is what four entries for you all right we got our sprouts we got our green cauliflower do i need to open up this more yes so coming in let's do a couple cracks of fresh pepper first and then we'll do a sprinkle of salt the oven's at 400 degrees fahrenheit and these should take about 15 to 20 minutes to roast until they're cooked through and have some caramelization going on. The hornet came back. The wasp came back. Thank you, Bonk, for the 500 biddies. Heck yeah, friendos. And I mean, we could stir this around halfway through the roasting process of the vegetables. If it seems like it's not cooking that evenly. So I'll just go bring these over to the oven. And now we're gonna set up our induction with the pot. Start heating up our liquid for the polenta. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Torino, for that. You're killing me, man. <laughs> Don't choke on your own saliva. Don't do it, Chad. It's dangerous. Thank you, Tika Stella, for the 100. Your wife makes sprouts in a ripping hot 500 degree cast iron. Yeah. Caramelized and sweet and amazing. Does she do like any maple syrup or honey? I really like butter and maple syrup. Annie, thank you for donating $30 to our donation goal right now, which is a double door stainless steel fridge that's going to be going into our mobile commissary kitchen for the stream. Thank you very, very much for that, Annie. We're now at $350 out of $3,000 goal. That's a long-term one too, right? Nice, guys. Thanks for the awesome hype train before we're finishing up Luncheroo here together. I got all the level one emotes, so true, true to all of you. And let's keep having a great day here. Dun, 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 dun. We need this. Move over, cheese. Now I just need a cord. Why don't 
I set a 10 minute timer to check those veggies too. So how we're gonna make the polenta, we heat up the liquid first, and then from there, we just whisk in the cornmeal into the hot liquid. The finely ground cornmeal cooks very quickly, so this should not take more than 10 minutes. Polenta time! Just wipe this off. I'll go grab... Need like a small pot or something here. I don't think my other pots work. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Pour out the fryer oil from my one Dutch oven. This thing, we need to pour that out. I'm gonna do it on this side here so no one watches me and puts me under pressure. <laughs> Should I even do that? Nah, I'm not even gonna go through that. I'm not even gonna put myself through this. I'm thinking it's going to be easier than it is. So heck the induction. We're just going to go regular pot today. Heck it. It might go quicker. But it's not easier. And this, I have to say, has really been my struggle. I guess I just have to buy a better quality stainless steel pot set that actually works on this. I think the certain gauge that we have is just not high enough. And that's kind of annoying, as you can tell. And I mean, it's not that fun to cook when you're annoyed. <laughs> Accurate statement right there. What is a good gauge? I don't know. I have to look it up. Like I've never really used inductions before because I never had to. I just assumed that my stainless pot set would work, right? It's like, oh, it's full stainless steel. Okay, so I'm gonna get this rocking. Go on this burner. And maybe put it more this way so it's centered. What do we like better? Okay, high, high heat. Let's see how long this is gonna take. Two cups of water. Four cups of broth. And we'll just pop the lid on there. And so we got our cheese ready to go. We got our cornmeal ready. What we do need is just a small little bit of butter. If we push this back, it'll still be a good little working space that we can see everything. <laughs> Happy to see you don't take the trash bag way of dumping the grease in the street drain. Oh my gosh, Nola. I would never, ever. That would be terrible. I think 12 gauge is good. <laughs> so they said quarter cup of butter. So 
something like that. And we can pop the butter into here right now too. As it's heating up, that's okay. And then I think if I'm not mistaken, the couple other times I've made this recipe before, we've had to add a touch of extra liquid. And usually just to keep this nice and creamy, we can add some milk in instead of remaking some broth, right? Thank you to CJ's Kitchen, Raiden with a party of 30. Welcome in, friendos. Sorry to say that there's nothing to raid from the fridge because we're already pretty much prepped up for the day. How did the stream go, CJ? What did you make? Hello, sassy cat, G baby. Okay, so there's that. I'm gonna go grab a whisk. Let's also not forget our corn in there. So maybe we'll pop the corn in at the same time as the corn meal. Because the corn kernels are not gonna take a long time to cook. Yeah, just need a whisk for the cornmeal. Hello, Joe Pegs. You came from CJ's. How did the stream go? It went well? Made macaroni salad and stuffed tomatoes? Nice. That's like bringing me back a bit old school, but I love it. Hopefully it all turned out awesome. Yeah, that corn's for you, Game Brain. Okay, hold tight. I'll be back with a whisk. Whisk is acquired. I'm also just gonna bring some of our desserts in. They're cooled off now. Start cleaning up while we're waiting. Oh, good one, Maya. Try a magnet on the bottom of your stainless. If it sticks, then it'll work on the induction. Thank you for the pro tip. CJ, thank you so much for sharing your community. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Are you uh, raiding and running? You got to go clean up now. As a motorbike, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> Classic. And hello, Bell and Shank. Yeah, vroom vroom. It must be the weekend, hey? And then the only other thing we got to think about is how we're going to plate all of this deliciousness up. For sure, for the ragu, we want a rimmed dish. Something to hold all of that saucy goodness in. We'll go like a white possible. We'll do that for Sammy's. And then mine is a little bit more surface area. That's gonna be mine. So that's all ready. That's heats enough. up. 
You've been seduced by motorbike guy, madame? No. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, timer's going off. 10 minutes for our veggies. I'll go have a peek. I might have to slow those down. Yeah, those are crisping up really nice, though. Look at this. If anyone's had green cauliflower before, so you can see how it's just starting to caramelize on the sheet pan. Pop those back in. Brussels are looking awesome. Do another 10 minutes and then we should be good. Hello, swiftly to death. Thank you, Mary Todd, gifting this up to Bell and Shank 100. Welcome to the kitchen crew, Bell and Shank. It's great to have you. <laughs> oh, okay, madame. <laughs> it's, your, it's your sarcasm. You're not actually seduced. Sorry. Really, Nola, you've never rode a bike before, like even pedal or motorbike, just fall down a lot. I am like, a bicycle is a part of me. I've been riding a bike since I was three years old without training wheels. So yeah, bicycles and me, we're friends. <laughs> Madame, yeah. <laughs> if you find me a single guy that makes brisket like Sammy does, I will be seduced. <laughs> <laughs> Hard not to be, right? <laughs> Mary, thank you for also gifting the sub to Swiftly to Death. Welcome to the kitchen crew. Mary's al already gifted 15 subs to our community. Thank you, Mary. That's two more entries into the raffle for you as well. <laughs> Game brain, yeah, coming in here. Ah, uh, just want to put this out here. I can make brisket and ride motorbikes. <laughs> people helping people. I'm gonna give this a stir. Okay, we're almost there. I feel it. That's what happens when you don't watch the water heat up. You just chat with your friends instead. Oh yeah. I was gonna go grab a little bit of milk just in case we needed it. So I'll be back. And I'll also bring out the Caesar salad dressing for the veggies. Yeah, right, Nola. You've never had a bike or even tried one. So when people tell you, oh, it's just like riding a bike, you're like, well, what does that mean? <laughs> I got nothing. This is going to be so good. I can't wait. So this is our homemade Caesar dressing. We're using it up today. We made it on a previous stream. And you better bet your bottom that it's got anchovy in it. So yes, it's not vegetarian and it's definitely not vegan. Give that a stir and get it ready for the drizzle. Oh, it's already that time. Oh no, it's only 3.20 on my side. I was like, it's already 4.20? Not us, though. Phew. Bring two more ears of corn. <laughs> yeah, that is fair, Bonk. It's scary out there. I mean, like some, 
Like this would be me, is I would be the terrible person that just is like stupid on a motorbike. I already know that. I'm a bit of a speed demon. So like to stop that from happening, I just don't get a motorbike. I'll, I'll stick to my pedal bike and that's enough for me. But yeah, it goes both ways. Like it's dangerous for motorcyclists because of cars and stuff and the drivers, but also some motor bikers are terrible drivers, get themselves into trouble. Thanks so much, Mary. I love to hear that. And oh, look at this. See, we didn't watch it and it came on up. No problem. So now I'm going to turn that down a touch. Now we go down to like three out of five for heat level. Oh, it could be pescatarian. That's true, Greek. That's true. Annie, you're going to go to your sister's tomorrow to see your dad and uncle. Nice. You'll miss the stream. No worries, Annie. You go visit with your family. Yeah, it'll be nice to you and your pops. So we're all out of corn. There is actually one more cob. There is one more cob in the fridge. Okay, so we do want this simmering as we pour the fine cornmeal in. And then the next bit will be the corn kernels. And so we're sprinkling kind of as we're whisking two hand process here. And that way we don't end up with any lumps and then it really should not take long before this starts to thicken. We don't add any of the cheese in here until the end. Okay, so it's thickening already. Pop out all of that in. Fresh corn kernels. And even with a whisk, it mixes no problem. You could also do frozen. If you want to make this like in the middle of winter, always delish. And then just careful as we cook this because it likes to bubble up if you don't keep stirring it. And I always call it like molten polenta because it's so hot and starchy, it's like instantly burns and sticks to your skin. Should you feel scared? Yes. Even I'm scared of this. Whoa, it's so corny. Insanely corny. This is the polenta. <laughs> Cornorama. <laughs> ah, see the bubbles as soon as that starts again? Keep whisking. Let's see where we're at. The cornmeal is cooked. The corn is almost there. Added a really nice sweetness too. But yeah, the cornmeal is not even gritty anymore. It's perfectly cooked and smooth. Does not take long. So just let the corn kernels cook a bit longer and then we'll add our cheese in. Are you ready for our cheeses, Pooh? Puppers is getting ready. Get out of here, fly. Looks like mashed potato corn, kind of. <laughs> Annie, you've never seen polenta with corn kernels in it. 
I don't think it's often made this way, right? But I usually do it when it's corn season, end of summer, just once. Such a good flavor and adds like a really different texture, right? Could be a nice vegetarian dish. Cheesy poo. <laughs> I think we need a poo emo emote, hey? You add kerneled corn to your cornbread too. Yes, I have done that before too, mine. That's so good. I'm gonna cheddar it up. Annie watched one of my broadcasts from three years ago this morning and it brought back memories. I'm sure it did. <laughs> Which one did you watch even? Goodbye, Cheddar. My timer's going off for the oven. Probably just go over and turn that off while the cheese is melting in here. I think it was the jerk chicken one. Nice. I made that three years ago even. Oh, crispy Brussels sprout leaves. Took the ragu out. I'm gonna turn the oven off. Okay, I think the corn is cooked. If I can feel it with the whisk, it's softened up a bit. I'm gonna just shut that off. in the upstairs kitchen even and i had curled my hair <laughs> such a nerd three years ago big time big time big time okay i'm gonna use the other side of my spoon to see what we concocted here mm, the cheddar in there is so good and the vegetable broth added really nice flavor let's do a sprinkle of parm just for saltiness and some funk yeah, something like that. <laughs> and then it doesn't even seem like this got overly thick. So you can decide whether you want it thinner or thicker. You can add a bit more milk if you feel like you want to thin it out. And then the other pro tip I was going to say is when serving polenta, basically as soon as you put it on the plate or into the bowl, it starts to solidify and harden up. So make sure that you're not cooking it too far ahead of time. I'm gonna get rid of this whisk and then just pop a lid on here to keep it warm. And then we're gonna start setting up our plating station. And I'm also just gonna give my veggie trays a little shake. Just wanna show you how they're looking. So all of the Brussels sprout leaves crisped up like crazy in the middle. No, they look burnt on camera, but they're not. Where's my tongs? Mmm. And if we see the other side of the sprout, wherever it was touching the sheet pan, it got the color on it. Can you hear the crispage though? So those are good. And then our cauliflowers. Take that little crazy piece off and have a taste. Make sure I'm happy with it. I want it to still have a bit of al dente bite so it's not completely soggy. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow, that's fresh. Okay, we didn't even need the milk. Let's take this off. I'll get rid of my hot plate. Clear the area! Caesar dressing. Okay, we gotta wipe this too. We were making a mess. Caesar dressing and cheese for the veggies. Got our polenta next to us here. One more trivet, I'll bring the ragu over. And I think I'll just take the veg out from the Traeger. This, this got like thick. Holy, are you down with the thickness? Yum. See how the meat's like basically already falling apart? So that's why we didn't cut it too small earlier. Oh, what? Okay, I'm just gonna have a little spoonful of that to make sure we don't need any extra seasoning. Get a little bit of pork in there too. We're down with the tasteness. Doctor, please save us. Thank you for the follow. Little bit of salt. Just a touch. Gonna sprinkle all over. There's our parm piece. <laughs> That's good. Cheesy polenta next to us. Away we go. Yeah, a little bit of salt. Okay, so first thing I'm putting on the plate is our polenta. Always put that in the bottom and then we pile everything else on top. Yeah, it's really nice and soft. And I do like to make a soft polenta when I make a ragu to go with it. We can put the polenta like just off center. Now you can't see because I'm just off of the camera angle. Show you in one moment here. Somewhere like that. And then... From here, I'm gonna go do or get the veg on. Actually, maybe not. Maybe I will scoop the ragu. It's a good area. The only thing I am gonna do, just because of the angle here, prop this side up a touch. Otherwise, all the sauce is gonna flow down that way. So we scoop our ragu. Want to be able to see some of the polenta as well, right? Beautiful sauce, how it turned out. It's not too loose or anything like that. Get our hot cloth. Start popping our veggies on. Oh, that's beautiful. Thanks, dearly.
Krispy Crunchums. Mm. Oh, I like that little one right there. So cute. There. Just leave you the tongs over there. There we go. Okay, next. Oh, balsamic for sure. So just a little bit, right? Just to dress our veggies. You could have also done the veggies just on this side. But I thought it would go together really well. You want some of this? Mm -hmm. Sammy's like, oh, all that cheese is for me? Thank you. Okay, quick photo on my end, guys, and then I can finally taste this with everyone. That is a hearty dish. <laughs> I like all the colors. I didn't even really think about that. Yellow, green, and red. What? I'll give you an extra shot. Hey. How's it? Good. Okay. <laughs> he says it's good. Okay, so first thing I just want to show. So the polenta always forms like this little skin at first as it sits on the plate. But then the inside is still nice and runny. Let's get some of that in our life. Mmm. I love the pop of the corn kernels. Mm -hmm. Very hearty meal for sure, Annie. Okay, this pork nugget is speaking to me. Get that with some polenta. Yes. Mm-hmm. So soft and buttery. I love this little sneaky fresh tomato wedge here too. Yum. Okay, next one. Brussels sprout. Dressed with some Caesar salad dressing and cheeses. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I would just eat that like on its own. You guys should see the amount of flies that just rolled in. Mm -hmm. Like 10, just all, cause all my equipment's black, right? So they're just like all posted up on the different areas. We have an audience. Live internet audience, live fly audience. You rang the dinner bell. Yeah. Like, look at that cauliflower. The beautiful little caramelization on the one side. A little bit of bite still, so it's not mushy in your mouth. Mmm. That's like the winter version of Caesar salad. Mm -hmm. Did you really like it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks, Annie. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, I want to try a little bit with some of the polenta. Veggies are there for health. Because, yeah, the rest of this is quite heavy. Mmm. I'm good with all of that. That's really it's actually a really good combination together, guys. Thank you for another an amazing meal. Wait, Game Brain. What is the date for the annual Kate and Sam Canada cookout? We don't have one set yet. Because of the pandemic, we're just holding off on planning anything. Don't know about you guys, but I get really upset and sad when plans don't work out, especially when they're big ones. So yeah, not planning anything in the future because we just got put on, again, another state of emergency in our province. Things are not good here. Oh yeah, Nola. The bag of water with pennies in it? That's supposed to work, right? Get out of here. Mm. Yum. Everything is like better together than it would be separate. That doesn't always happen. That's right, Annie. Perfect time. Save up, accumulate our equipment that we need so that we can do Sam and Kate Canada Cookout. Fat Tire Festival, I'm in. My Everyone has got to pitch in and work together so we can all get back to something resembling normal. Yes. Yeah. A flame torch? Let me just go ask Rando real quick, Annie. <laughs> just burn it with fire. So you don't just wind up with a bag of dead stinky flies? Yeah, let's let's try this. Hey, Tika Sella. Yum, yum, yum. I'm excited to hear what my brother thinks of this. Hopefully it'll help his tummy feel better. Those veggies might be the best part, though. I hate saying that. I hate when that happens. Oh no, Maya! Your friend sent her kitchen curtains on fire trying to burn the flies in the house. Thank you, Mario Maserati. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is fall food at its finest. Still able to use farmer's market fresh vegetables last of the season. And then it's winter time. Root veggies, starches. Thanks for the follow as well, Mario. Welcome, welcome. Okay, friendos, we did it. And look, it's not even 4 p.m. yet. We did dessert. Dark chocolate, coconut blondie bars. We did a homemade polenta, creamy cheesy, fresh cur corn kernels. We did a mix of cheddar and Parmesan. Our pork ragu, we did a roasted tomato sauce with some garlic, basil, thyme. Snuck our pork in there. And then our veg. Cauliflower and Brussels sprouts roasted until caramelized, about 15 minutes. And then you put some homemade Caesar salad dressing on with some more cheese. Cheese, 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 cheesed it up. Hey, that would be fun. Well, yeah, I, I know that the fat tire is for bikes. 
It'd be really fun. And yeah, Bonk always does the garlic fest. <laughs> when it was slow time during garlic fest, you and your dad would just use the handheld propane torch to burn the wings off of flies. That's so creepy, Bonk. Then you just have like wingless flies crawling around. <laughs> what? Earth girl now. Thank you for the follow. Fat tire is also a beer. Right, Wilson. Right. I also think the Caesar dressing is like good with the polenta. Hmm. Oh, they just flop around on the ground. Hilarious. Okay. I'm creeping. We're finishing up the stream. Who are we gonna go raid? My nose is running like crazy today. I don't understand. Yesterday I was like, oh, I think I almost beat my allergies. Today, that's enough. It's like warm out. Bad things going on. Professor Mendel's on? Ooh, let's go see her then. Good one, Wilson. No one even complained. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. I mean, the same thing happens sometimes with our fly zapper. They don't hit it enough, so they just zap the wings off. And like you said, they kind of just crawl or flop around. <laughs> Raid, Professor Mendel. Yeah, best of both worlds or best of three worlds. Hey, cooking beer and mountain bikes. Let's go, Game Brain. Okay, flies are coming in with a vengeance. Friendos, thank you for the awesome hype train today. I'm going to switch up this view. Thanks for hanging out with us while you had the time to. Hopefully we inspired you to create some deliciousness for yourself. Maybe someone else today. Like Annie said, might just have to go to the store and buy some Brussels sprouts so I can make that. Seriously, do it up. It's so, so good. So good. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. Save those recipes if you haven't yet. Or if you're in our Discord, know that they're always there, able for you to search them up at any given time. Or just give us a message. All right, so we're going to go see Professor Mendel, someone who we actually had the pleasure of meeting in person when we still lived on the island. She is a pastry chef. She went to school for pastry and baking, and now she is sharing her knowledge on Twitch as well. So we'll be back tomorrow. Quick and easy Sunday stream. We're cooking up some brunch, apple pie, French toast. And we already made the sourdough bread yesterday on stream. So that's good to go. Make some apple compote tomorrow. A couple other fixins. Num, num, num in our tub. All right, this is going to end. I'm going to hit this button. If you need us at all, you know where to find us on Discord and Twitch. Until tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>